Hi, hello, welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is January the 6th, 2024. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Um, Let's see here. I did some laundry today in the snow, no less. So that was a task and a half, but we got that done. Uh, let's see here. Food Corner was actually really good. Sadly, no donuts. They were um, closed for renovations. So, you know, hey, I get it. I understand. But I uh, had a good banger dinner last night at the local Domino's. <laughs> um, also, too, man, I felt so dumb. Uh, this is still lingering for me, which is funny. I hate, don't you hate when you have like a moment this is real life and you're having dialogue with a person and for whatever reason you just completely like fumble it like especially at the end and the guy was like yeah have a good night like you know have a wonderful night and I go yeah you too have a good night and like to me it just felt so redundant to say the last part and I was just like well that's locked in now and this guy sees me on the week a weekly basis um so yeah you know that happens sometimes but anyway back to the food I got a sausage and pineapple pizza, and then um, with the sauce, I got barbecue sauce there. Then I got a salami and ham pizza with, um, it was like two kinds of cheeses, I think, if I'm not mistaken, and um, no sauce this time. And my reasoning for this was, um, I was looking up, because I wanted to try to get... um, I was initially thinking Alfredo sauce, but I don't necessarily like their Alfredo sauce. It's one of those things where I do, if I go back to my core memories, I remember that's an icky thing for me. But um, I was like, well, maybe my palate changed. And then I I kept thinking about the Philly cheesesteak pizza that they have. And I was like, oh, I think that has Alfredo sauce in it. So like, it wouldn't be that bad. But then I looked it up and apparently at least, you know, I think I got this from Cora. So maybe it's not real. Um, But um. I believe that they don't use a sauce for it, but they put down a bunch of provolone cheese and that acts as like a a sauce base. And I was like, oh, okay, so maybe if I put on so much cheese, it'll do that here. And it kind of didn't, but it was still a good pizza despite having no sauce. I still would rather have the sauce, but overall, really good meal, very yummy, yummy. And um, now we're here. So let me get into my startup and then we will get into some news. Oop, is there a burp coming? Maybe? There it is. There it was. All right. From The Guardian. Alaska Airlines grounds Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes after mid-air window blowout. Scary. Alaska Airlines has grounded all Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes after a window and a chunk of fuselage blew out on one of the aircraft in mid-air shortly after takeoff. An airline, an Alaska Airlines Boeing 737 had to make an emergency landing shortly after taking off from Portland, Oregon on Friday. Evan Smith, who was among those on board, told Katu TV that a boy sitting in a row with his mother had his shirt sucked off him out of the plane. His mother was holding him, he said. You heard a big loud bang to the left rear, a whooshing sound, and all the oxygen masks deployed instantly, and everyone got those on. Uh, where some people were like, oh, it was really abrupt. We just got to altitude, and the window wall popped off, and I, and I, often I didn't notice it until the oxygen mask came off. So essentially, they're like, oh, shit, whoa. Um, luckily, though, there was no one injured. Everyone's okay. But obviously, this is like a big concern for a plane that was, um, you know, just made. And I think it was, you know, just rolled out maybe like two months ago. So that's a big concern. Also, too, with um, 
the Max. Uh, let's see. The Max is the newest version of Boeing's venerable 737, a twin-engine plane, single aisle, pl- uh, a twin-engine single-aisle plane, frequently used on U.S. domestic flights. The plane went into service in May of 2017. Two Max uh, eight planes crashed in 2018 and 2019, killing 346 people and leading to a near two-year worldwide grounding of all Max eight and Max nine planes. They returned to service only after Boeing made changes to an automatic flight control system implicated in their crashes. Max deliveries have been interrupted at times to fix manufacturing flaws. In December, the company told airlines to inspect the planes for a possible loose bolt in the rudder control system. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's just crazy that, I mean, these are the things that transport us from to and fro. And I mean, I get it. It's just like a car. You know, sometimes cars have issues and we do a recall and we fix those recalls. But it is a big, bigger, dramatic thing when it's something that's happening in the air with like, you know, so many fucking people. You know what I mean? Uh, So, yeah, that was always something I wanted to talk about. Uh, Let's go ahead and ground it and let's go to the Supreme Court. We got, uh, yeah, get your tomatoes ready. I don't know. Uh, From NPR. Supreme Court allows Idaho abortion ban to be enacted. First such rule since Dobbs. So, I mean, Supreme Court's really been back in a big way. I always just begrudgingly have to, like, get into the mode to, like, cover them taking on stuff. Um, The U.S. Supreme Court on Friday allowed Idaho's abortion ban to go into effect for now and agreed to hear an appeal in the case, scheduling arguments for April. The court's order is the first time it is weighed on is weighted on a state's criminal law banning abortion since the high court's 2022 decision overturning Roe v. Wade. Idaho has been a leader of state's efforts to criminalize abortion. Its Defense of Life Act would make it a crime for every person who performs or attempts to perform an abortion, even when the woman's life is greatly endangered. Under the Idaho law, the only exception to abortion ban is when an abortion is necessary to prevent the death of a pregnant woman. Um, now, this was something that the Biden administration had in, in August of 22. What they were able to say, no, this doesn't work. Um, it conflicts with the Federal Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act. Um, essentially it's just, it's too narrow to work within that means. So therefore it cannot be legal. You have to stop this. But apparently the Supreme Court's like, you know what? They looked around, they said, well, this is going to be six to three. We're cool with it. We'll let it roll. And we'll hear, we'll hear an appeal, which, you know, I'm sure we'll get coverage on that and it'll be a big spectacle in the media or whatever, maybe. But I mean, they've already more or less ruled on it. They're probably not going to come off of this ruling. So it's very unfortunate. It's very sad to see this happen. Um, This is going to make it even harder for people to get the actual medical care they need. Um, You know, you're in a situation where it's like clearly having a, a, a pregnancy termination is the only thing that's going to alleviate your symptoms and get you to a healthy place, but you can't do that here. And you're going to have to go around and, and make other arrangements, make more expensive things, potentially something that you are maybe even priced out of. Um, it's very unfortunate to have to do this kind of coverage and see this is something that is happening and becoming more of a norm. You know, you would think something like this would be coming out of Texas, not, you know, the land of fucking potatoes. But, um, you know, here we are in Idaho talking about this fucking bullshit. Uh, I feel like I'm going to leave it there. You know, I mean, this is definitely going to be something that we're going to come back to. You know that shit. But, um, that's where we're at. Uh, another side, since we're talking about Supreme Court, the Supreme Court on Friday agreed to review a politically explosive decision from Colorado's top court that found former President Donald Trump ineligible for presidency and would leave him off the state's primary ballot, stepping into a high stakes legal showdown that could have major ramifications. So we're not surprised about this. We knew this was coming. I'm just like my burp. But, um, you know, figured I'd let you know that, that that they did take the case. And, you know, like I said earlier, too, that that's 
already going to be a thing that he's already going to be on the ballot in both that situation and Maine, if I'm not mistaken. You, you kind of can't stop it, but they were, you know, voicing their indignation this way and, you know, through legal channels. Though, you know, some people are debating. You say, oh, you can't do that. You shouldn't be able to do that. You know, he hasn't been tried in court yet. Like, okay, Chris Christie, we hear you. Ugh. Ugh. Anyway, uh, we have a couple more stories. So let's keep it moving from NBC News. Former Colorado officer Randy Rodima sentenced to over one year in jail and killing of Elijah McClain. I really feel like I almost should put an asterisk by this, but we'll get into it real quick. A judge sentenced a former Colorado police officer convicted of killing Elijah McClain, a black pedestrian, to 14 months in jail with work release and four years probation. With this former Aurora police officer Randy Rodima will be able to serve his sentence with work release instead of straight jail following his deadly encounter with McLean on August 24th, 2019. Um, I don't like it if I'm being straight up with you. Um, uh, I feel like with a lot of these situations, you come to the understanding of like, you like the sense of accountability, but you almost know that it's never gonna like fit. Like, the, the sentencing is never going to fit. It's always going to come off as light. Um, but, yeah, the sentence is 14 months in county jail with work release are for a third-degree assault charge. And the four years probation are for a criminally negligent homicide charge to be served concurrently uh, with the jail sentence. He was also sentenced to 200 hours of community service. So, yeah, I mean, the mother of McLean described it as a slap on the wrist. I feel like it's the fucking same, you know, it, it's and in some ways. Yes, it's very unfortunate to me. I mean, that, that's why bias kicking in, whatever. I don't know. Call it whatever. I don't give a shit. But, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. It is one of those things, though, where, like I said, I do think in a lot of these situations, you just kind of have to say, hey, it's accountability. But it also bugs me that, like, the the, the judge is like, well, I, I don't think he, he's he's going to, you know, he's not a bad guy. He's not going to do something like this again. He, he's got rehabilitative potential. But if, if – and this is what really makes me want to, like, flip my table is that if you take the badge out of this fucking situation, this person's in jail, period. Like – and at the end of the day, this person was not protecting and serving. Like, oh, this per like, Rodima kind of says, oh, I was just doing what I was, to I was doing my training. Really, I just feel bad that I was called to the situation I shouldn't have been called to. But it's like, no, man, your training did not dictate that you carried yourself, conducted yourself in this way. Between you and the paramedics, this didn't have to go down this way. Elijah did not have to die. So it's very unfortunate that this guy just gets to, like, you know, work from jail, <laughs> So it's, uh, to me, it's just kind of a little bit slick. But I also understand, too, that, like, as I've been growing and doing this shit, like I said, what is the the purpose of rotting in a cell? What, How much good is that going to do to society as a whole, to even this person as a whole, especially if we're saying the goal is to rehabilitate a person? Which I'm going to use this as a segue to our last story. Uh, before we do that, you know me, I got to break it up with a fucking break. -ah. You know what that means? And then we will get into it. All right, from Reuters. Oscar Pistorius freed from jail 11 years after murdering girlfriend. South African former Paralympic star Oster, Oscar Pistorius was released on a parole, on release on parole Friday, nearly 11 years after murdering his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp, in a crime that shocked the nation inured to violence against women. Pistorius, dubbed Blade Runner for his carbon fiber prosthetic legs, shot 29-year-old model Steenkamp dead through a locked bathroom door on Valentine's Day in 2013. He has reportedly said he mistook Steenkamp for an intruder when he fired four shots into the bathroom at his uh, Victoria home. And 
he launched multiple appeals against his conviction on that bias. Now, I have to say, up front, I don't believe that for a fucking second, dog. I'm, I'm sorry, dog. I don't believe that, like, you thought this was an intruder that darted into the bathroom, so you had to unload the fucking clip. Like, no, it... This does read like domestic violence gone way, way, way too far, period. Like and I and I and I, I think also at the crux of it, that is something that is very frustrating for people on the on the other side of this. It's like, yo, this guy, he had he had a I believe it was a six year sentence. It was appealed then to a thirteen year sentence from um South African Supreme Court, and then now he is out um in eight years. So it is one of those things where they're like, this whole time, he's he's maintained that that's the story. That's what happened. And like, I think to me, and I think to also a lot of people, that shows that it's like, no, man, you're not actually accepting what, what reality is here. You're still leaning on this thing that like, I was just trying to do the right thing. I was just trying to protect myself. And this is just an accident. This is just a mistake. It's just a bad, like, no, man, like accountability i think is a huge thing in these situations and not having that is it's a very glaring thing it's it's a very telling thing i think to people um but at the same time there is a statement shared by steen camp family lawyer on friday reva's mother i said mother my bad reva reva's mother june said there can never be justice if your loved one is never coming back and no amount of time served will bring reva back that's true. We remain, excuse me, we who remain behind are the ones serving a life sentence. Adding, adding her only desire was to be allowed to live in peace after Pistorius's release on parole. Um, let's see here. It also is added that um, there's like a, a set amount of time that he is not allowed to interact with the media. Um, obviously, it is on parole. Also, he is uh, serving... See if I can find it. Um, Pistorius will also be required to continue therapy on anger management and attend sessions on gender-based violence as part of his parole conditions. Uh, the Steen Camp family has said. I think that's important. I think that is a good thing. Um, but let's see here. I, I, a part I wanted to really highlight because I think that this was something that really brought me into this article because at the end of the day, this is a story that happened before I was even into podcasting. Y'all know I really don't like to really kind of cover those because it requires me to like do a historical catch up and all that. And I'm not, I feel like I'm that kind of podcaster really. I'm sorry. I don't know. But um, a th this part right here, I felt like was really a big highlight that I've been hearing and I wanted to really cover. Uh, but a local woman's rights organization said the Pistorius case showed there was a lack of accountability for perpetrators and inadequate justice for victims of violence in the country. We are talking about somebody's life that has been taken. The fact that someone can walk out free eight years later, it tells us that it's not that big of a deal. Spokesperson for Women of Change, Vuelta Adonis, said, told Reuters. And I think that is a very telling thing. They also said, I think an average of 12 women are murdered every day in South Africa. So that that's a big statistic. Um, so... Like I said, it, just with the other thing, too, where we're talking about rehabilitation and saying, like, hey, we don't want to see people actually rot in prison. We want to see change. We want to see people turn around. And we don't want to see people coming back, obviously. Um, but there also does need to be this sense of punishment and justice because that is a part of our legal system. You know what I mean? That is where we are at as a society still. And, um, you know, does this fit? Does this work? I don't know. I mean, I, I guess that's in the eye of the beholder when it comes to this discourse. Um, you know, I, I think for me, there's my lizard brain that says, yeah, Pistoria should, should be serving like the whole thing. Give, give it, give him all of it. But it's like, but also what does that do? And then with the Rodima thing, like, you know what I mean? If it's, if this is by the, the quote unquote legal number, then like, what am I getting mad about? Like, what, is it worth that energy? You know what I mean? And I, I ponder that shit. I, I wonder that shit. Because I know there's going to be more of this fucking shit in the future that I'm going to be coming and telling you guys about. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. That's where I'm at with it. It's, it's a lot to ponder in, in such a short amount of time. But we do it. That's just what we do every day on this podcast. Hey, you know? Uh, that's the episode. I feel like I want to call it there. Put a pin in it. Um, thank you so much for uh, stopping by. And uh, I got a shill real quick, you know, this is that time. 
patreon.com slash Isaiah News if you'd like to support the effort. Uh, I shout you out at the top of the podcast and or top of the month and um, I um, shout your name out. Plug a project if you'd like. Uh, free ways to hit me up, Isaiah News one at gmail.com. I'm on all the socials you're on, so feel free to follow me, say what's up that way. Uh, it's always nice to communicate. I really don't care. <laughs> Whatever, whenever. However, um, I don't sleep much, sadly. Uh, let's see here. Um, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube, it would be a big help if you did. Like helps. Like that like thumbs up thing. That helps. Um, hit the, what else is there? Hit the, hit the comment section. You know, say what's up there. That's always cool. I always love a good hello, a good poignant thing to say. I think that's great. Uh, and then, yeah, hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye. Mwah.